a different video than my regular videos. So let's talk about quality of life changes and a few things which I think that could improve the overall Headlight Loose experience. For this video I took the liberty and some inspiration from what you could call more matured games that have been around the block for a few years now. The addition or changes I will be suggesting in this video are more quality of life changes and or small adjustments to the game in its current state, which is update 12. Usually I say this at the end of a video, but I would love to hear what you think about these ideas at the end of the video and maybe even have ideas of your own you want to create some awareness for. So feel free to leave a comment with your ideas. Before we kick it off, and I'm doing an assumption here, I think I have a fairly good idea what the first thought that pops in your head will be. I think I can say, and we all agree on the fact, that this game needs a proper tutorial to learn the blueberries the ropes of the game and how to play it. Given the fact that Hell at Loose in itself is a harder game to get into than let's say Call of Duty, Battlefield, Counter Strike, the learning curve in Hell at Loose is quite steep and even on a basic level like surviving for more than 10 seconds. Besides understanding on how to play this game, you also have to understand the concept of garrisons, outposts, defending, attacking, capping sectors, and so on. All in all, it's quite complex to understand and underlines the further need of a good tutorial to learn the fundamentals, but also get a bit more in-depth into different roles. I reckon a good way to tackle this issue is to have some sort of bootcamp style campaign when you first launch the game after buying it. You can give this bootcamp a World War II style and World War II look and feel, but let's say we give new players a crash course or a bootcamp on the fundamentals of the game. Like explaining the basic mechanics like controls, shooting and after the basic introduction, dive a bit further into the game explaining what garrisons are, capping sectors. Also, a good thing would be to make this bootcamp mandatory before you can even join a server. That way, new players have a decent base of understanding of the game to work with and improve naturally whilst playing the game more and more. For different specialist roles like support, engineer, assault and such, you can have different bootcamp scenarios per role and may also make it mandatory to complete a bootcamp scenario for a certain role before you unlock it and make it playable. In short, if you want to play Assault, you will have to complete the Assault bootcamp scenario. I think this will smooth or iron out a few problems that or frustrations a lot of public servers and veteran players are experiencing at the moment. Also aware of the fact, or at least making assumption, some content creators might not be too happy if it gets into the game, since a lot of us grew a channel based on making guides, myself included. Again, this is assumptions and not based on facts, but for me personally, I would welcome this idea and maybe even get more players involved into the game, since they get a good understanding of how the game works. For the next few tips, I had to reinstall some games I haven't touched in years to get the footage I needed. At the moment we have no way of testing weapons and testing bullet drop off or test how to drive a tank seeing how it behaves on certain terrain or to see how much bullet drop there actually is in a game with certain weapons. Generally speaking, to get some practice in, you have to jump through a few hoops. Yes, you can find an empty server to play on, test say, let's say a weapon, but then you are limited to either the squad leader or a commander role. For instance, if you want to test the STG-44, you will have to either to find a buddy to open up a squad for you, or find a community server that is seeding and hoping there is a squad set up without a player having picked the assault role. After doing that and getting that problem out of the way, then you are facing the next one. How to practice your aim for example, since you have no targets unless you have a buddy volunteering getting shot over and over again. What I think would be a good addition to the game and solution for this problem would be adding a shooting range, and you can even make this error correct look and feel wise. This could also tie into the whole bootcamp idea for the tutorials, make uh, a basic bootcamp. If you look at the more matured games that I mentioned in the introduction, PUBG introduced a shooting range and training map a few years ago where players can train their aim, practice how certain weapons handle or learn what the recoil pattern is for a certain weapon. There's also room to practice grenade throwing, how certain vehicles drive, 
And the best thing with this shooting range, you can practice shooting targets at different increments, like at 200, 400 and 800 meters. You also have the option to practice standing targets, moving targets and targets inside buildings. But you can expand further on this idea and take some inspiration in there from Counter-Strike Global Offensive aim maps. Now, I am aware this would only interest a small percentage of the players. Like for me, it would be certain something I would like to see implemented. If you look at CSGO aim maps, you can select targets, how many targets, the weapon you want to shoot with, the interval of targets and, and so on. Basically, you get a lot of customization options to create a scenario you want to practice. Keybinds. For this one, I also took a bit of inspiration, well, I basically stole it from other games, like CSGO or Escape from Tarkov. If we look at keybinding options in CSGO, for example, grenades, you have multiple options to keybind your grenades. You can set up a general keybind to cycle through it by pressing that keybind multiple times. But you can also set a separate keybind for each type of grenade. So how does this apply to Hell Let Loose? Well, I would love for the fact if you could set separate keybinds for let's say smoke grenade, frag grenade and bandages. Then I happily could bind all of them on a separate key. For instance, G for a smoke grenade and you could bind bandages and frag grenades to mouse 4 and mouse 5. This way players can set up the keybinds they are most comfortable with but also keybinds that are better in reach and more easy access on the fly. Small change, but a huge quality of life impact, I would say. Now, the next tip is a more of a class change or a map change even. A few updates ago, they made a crucial change on how players interact with barbed wire. I remember when I first started playing this game, you could vault over barbed wire or you could walk through it. Can't recall exactly how it worked in detail but it wasn't really in the way as an obstacle. Realism-wise, yeah, I can understand that they changed it for the sake of realism, but we need something in return to get rid of existing barbed wire on some of the maps. And yes, and engineers can also dismantle enemy uh, blueprints and stuff. But we need something to either pound our way to the barbed wire. Let's say if we look at WN7 or AA Pat 3 you will have to walk miles and miles around the barbed wire. And if you lose that point, there are only a few ways into it, which makes retaking that point an absolute nightmare. I reckon we need something to counteract this. Like, and for the sake of realism, keeping it historically accurate in a way. My suggestion would be to add some form of bolt cutters to the engineer class, or even what would be way cooler is to add bangalores, which were used on D-Day to create breaches in the German barbed wire networks. On the flip side, it could also cause some balancing issues by making barbed wire destructible, but at least for AA battery and WN7, I don't foresee any major issues because you still need to get in there to destroy them. Another thing that could help new players and maybe even more seasoned players is by adding in loading screen tips. They can put any tip they want in there just add in a small rectangle, add a nice font to it, and build a list of tips. Hell, I think even when it comes down to it, the community wants to build the list for them. This list of tips can be anything and everything related to the game. They can also rotate the tips, for instance, show a tip for 10 to 15 seconds, and then switch over to the next one. It is a small adjustment, but it adds a lot of value and information for players. Because if you think back, how many times have you just sat there staring at the loading screen? So these are just a few ideas I could think of to improve the game. I do find that the game needs to be historically accurate to a certain degree. Because we also have to have a happy balance between realism and gaming. I'm really curious what your thoughts are about these changes that I am suggesting. Or what would you like to see added or changed in the game? Let me and everyone know in the comments and I will see you in the next one.